Good morning. Good morning, Bethel. Welcome to worship this morning. Whether you are sitting on your couch, at your dining table, on your bed, or in your kitchen, we at Bethel Lutheran Church welcome you. While we cannot still be together in person, we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayers. So let us take a deep breath to allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be. The spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless of our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. When the life um, is taken away from one, affects all of us. Let's take a moment to mourn the 200,000 people who died from, from COVID for the past few months. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the blood of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise, to Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The opening hymn is on page five in your bulletin. All hail the power of Jesus' name. So we will sing verses one through four.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our choir anthem is just a closer walk with thee. The first lesson is from the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Revedim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, 
go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 20, 25. The cantor will sing the odd numbers. The second lesson is from the book of Philippians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, and any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the second lesson. At this point in time, we will continue with our prayer requests. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Sadie, Sophia, Gabe, Ken, Virginia, Dawn, Art, Eileen, Jackie, Cecilia, Martha, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Megan, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Steve, Tom, Carol, Chris, Ellen, Jill, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Pat, Connor and family, Michael and family, Susan, and finally, Neil. We also pray for hope, comfort, help, and healing for all those whose lives have been affected by COVID-19. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable, the elderly, those with underlying conditions, medical care providers, and our siblings from the community of color. We also ask for your care and safety, Lord, for all who are dealing with the wildfires, especially here in California. And we pray for the firefighters who are working to keep us safe. We also ask for your care and safety be extended to all those who are being battered by storms along the South and Atlantic coasts. We also pray to give your church unity, inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may, may be at work in us. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, especially for the life and ministry of Pastor Carl Munro, a former pastor of the Synod. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. We also remember all the men, women, and families of those who put their lives on the line for others. And we ask that you would bless them as they serve to protect us and help us. We also want to pray for our benevolence for this month, the Bulldog Pantry. And finally, we want to pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our nominating committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. We ask all of these various things in your son's precious name, Amen.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When he entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and, why, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I, I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd. For all we gird, John as a prophet. So they, ans they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man has had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon hymn is on page 9 in your bulletin, Creating Me a Clean Heart, O God. the road proclaiming the good news, bringing sight to the blind, and healing to the sick. He has fed the multitude miraculously, walked on water, and calmed the storm. Immediately before today's passage, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem in triumph. Hosanna to the son of David. He immediately goes to the temple, enters it, and begins to turn over the tables used by businessmen and bankers in the temple, the epicenter of the Jerusalem's economy, and invited in children and the blind and the blame who had been historically barred from entry. The voices of marginalized people ring out in the center of the city's social, economic, and religious hub, while commerce is disrupted. The next day, Jesus is confronted by a group of leaders of the temple with an obvious question. Who gave you this authority to do 
these things. Of course, these this things refers to him cleansing the temple, curing the blind and, and lame, feeding the hungry, providing for the poor, listening to the weak, and giving hope to the hopeless. It is, of course, a trick question. Jesus cannot answer it without getting deeper into trouble. If he says God is the source of his authority, he would be immediately denounced as a blasphemer. If he names a teacher or a human source for his authority, he would be denounced as misguided and dangerous. So, he turns the question back on his question is, where did John the Baptist get his authority? Wow. This is an even harder and thornier question. Here is why. If the religious leaders agree that John's authority came from God, then the question to them is, why did you oppose him? And if they say it's from a human source, then that response would anger a large part of the crowd. For in death, John has achieved a bit of celebrity status. So they refuse to answer the, que to answer the question. And Jesus refuses to answer the question. And the question of authority goes unanswered but not for so long. Jesus changes the focus of the question with the parable that becomes the lens by which they can see their error and imagine a better understanding of God's reign in the world. He tells them, what do you think? A man had two sons. The man also has a vineyard. And if you know anything about vineyards, there is no sugar coating this work, as someone put it. The vines need to be pruned expertly, and when the grapes are ready, they have to be picked right away in order to have the right sugar levels for good vine, wine. It is a tricky business. So the day has arrived. There is work to be done and the man needs all the help he can get. First son, will you come and work in the vineyard today? Yeah, sure, come the answer, great. Second son, will you, come, will you come and work in the vineyard today? No, I'm busy, fine. The father does not argue. He accepts the commitments of his sons as they are and presumably goes himself to work in the vineyard. And there he's joined, not by the first son who had agreed to work, but rather by the second son who had declined to work. So my question to you who are listening, what do you think Jesus is saying here? So what I invite you to do is to think of the vineyard as life in this world and the work to which the sons are called as the work of the gospel. This work also represents the future, my future, your future, our future, and the future of the community of Christ, the church. The invitation to work in this vineyard in this context is, in fact, an invitation to enter into the future. What kind of work shall we do to guarantee the future of our community of Christ, the church? What might God be trying to do at Bethel Lutheran? I know we've been working on the property itself during these months when we haven't been able to meet in person, make it a safe place to be, sprucing up the pens, securing the brickwork, making it ready for what's next. But what happened? When God moves our focus from maintenance to mission, 
of course the future is uncertain. Any farmer can tell you that you can't predict how good a crop you'll harvest at the beginning of the season. So the work has the potential to lead to failure or end to hard times, disappointment and loss. But at the same time, the work also has the potential to open up a wonderful and productive harvest, which is successful and filled with promise despite some heartache along the way. So will you work in the vineyard? Will you enter into the future? Will you trust and take the chance? The first son seems to want his father to believe that he wants to participate, but he wants to enter into this unknown future and that he will do the work even though there is no assurance that he will be successful. He wants to make his father happy. But wait, things are fine the way they are, easy and, uncom and comfortable, even though I have promised to work, even though I am pretending to be all for doing the work. I really have no interest in it. It is too demanding. The second son, as an initial reaction that is probably pretty familiar to all of us, you can just see him rolling his eyes and hear the sigh. I don't really want to do that. It sounds exhausting. It sounds tiresome. There is no assured benef benefit. I, I really have better things to do. But as he reflects on it, he begins to realize the work represents the promise of the future and it's work that his father has called him to do. Jesus asked the temple authorities at this point to tell him which of these sons is doing the will of the father. Well, the answer, the second son, the one who went to work, rise, says to Jesus, the one who is willing to step out and embrace God's gift of the future. You temple authorities are the first son. You too interested in maintaining the status quo, your own authority, your own comfort. But God the Father is inviting you to step out beyond it and into the, and into the uncertain yet potentially glorious future. What about us? Which of these sons do we identify with? How many of us are more likely the first son who wants to hold on to what's comfortable even though that means the future will be unfruitful? How many of us can join the second son and enter into the future going to work in the vineyard of the world, the community, working to build a new future, trusting in the promise of the gospel. These are the questions this parable confront us with. It is scary to change and move beyond what we are used to. But no matter how wonderful the past was, it is now gone. And we have a God who asks us to step into the uncertainty of the future and embrace its, pot its potential. So my friends, will you go and work in the vineyard? When you get there, I think you will find that God is already there working and ready to work with you and support and embrace you as you move forward into the future. Amen.
Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of grace, bless you now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn is on page 10 in your bulletin, Change My Heart, O God. Go in peace, be safe, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.